Okay, hi everyone, it's Stephanie from Lumeria Star, and today I thought it would be fun to do one of those um, VR challenges. So VR is a virtual response, and this one was originally by Katie Flowers, and the hashtag is only 10 decks. So basically how I'm interpreting this challenge is if you have to basically distill down your collection to only 10 decks, this is all you can work with for the rest of your life, what 10 decks would they be? So that um, that's a challenge because I have well over 150 decks at this point. So um, I kind of just went with my gut. I didn't even think too deeply into it. I just like took the little notepad out in my phone and I was like, okay, if I can get 10 decks for the rest of my life, like which ones do I need to have? Which ones will give me like the most versatility and longevity? Is there like a deck with different purpose for a lot of different things? So this is what I came up with and um, yeah, let's get started. So this really is in no particular order, although this deck right here in this beautiful lavender moon bag is my absolute favorite. So for those of you who don't know what my favorite deck is, let me get this out of the bag. That is my beloved Moon Child Tarot. So this deck is pretty much my absolute favorite deck ever. Um, this is by Danielle Noel. And everything about this deck is just super high quality. It feels luxurious. It feels like every time I use it, and I've had this deck for since it came out um when did this come out 2017 maybe um you know i got it in the first run and since i've had this deck no matter how many times i use it it just feels very special it feels it makes pulling cards to me feel like a very like luxurious experience it feels like a beautiful sacred ritual which is how i really like to view um, using tarot. So I am a, you know, I admit I'm a total like Danielle Noel fangirl. I love her artwork. It really speaks to me. And um, I feel like her artwork is like a lot of what my dreamscapes look like. So I have always, even since I was a child, was a very vivid dreamer. I'm a very lucid dreamer, so I can kind of control my dreams within them. Um, sometimes they're very realistic and sometimes they're very otherworldly. And the otherworldly dreams, as um, soon as I saw the artwork in this deck, I was like, oh my gosh, how did she capture the landscapes of my dreams? So I feel like there's a connection there that I really love. I love the color palette. It's dreamy, but it's also very grounded. And I feel like I need more grounding energy in my life. And I think it's like maybe the gold tones. I also have the Star Child, which was like, I want to say that was the second deck I owned. But, uh, and I loved it. It was definitely there exactly where it needed to be in my tarot journey. And I'll never get rid of that deck just because it's very important to me. But when this deck came out, I was like, oh, like this is the vibe. Um, it's, it's just earthier. It's grounded, but it's like grounded in magic and it's very light and shadow, which I love. Like it's not all love and light that I feel like maybe Star Child is a little bit more on the lighter side. This feels a lot more balanced to me. And I've noticed too that when I have a really like serious or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A serious or like a very significant reading like my birthday readings like my year ahead readings this is the deck I always go for and I think it's because I trust it so much and oh it's just beautiful and then this this death card and I love the death card this is probably my favorite death card ever in the whole world it's just so gorgeous and like, not only are the cards beautiful, but the, the guidebook is amazing. It's just, it's such a joy to read. There's a lot of like um, content beforehand. There's spreads, there's shadow work. So this to me is like, if I had to distill my collection down to 10 decks, this is the number one deck um, I would have to have. And I would be very happy 
with this. So that is my deck number one in this challenge. Okay, so let's move on. And again, in no particular order other than that one because that is my favorite deck ever. Um, this one probably doesn't come as a surprise. Oops, bumped the camera there. This one probably doesn't come as a surprise either, but the Antique Anatomy, the Ephemera Edition, is another deck that is in my top 10 that I would absolutely have to have. Um, this is a deck that really pushed me to be a stronger reader, I think, and I think it's because it is more pippish. Um, I had this early on in my tarot journey, so I feel like I had to really work for the meanings. And um, so that, that's one reason why I love it. I also bonded with it on a trip to Salem. So I have like a lot of really good memories tied to this. And this was the deck I was using when I created Lumeria Star. So I think like that feels significant too. Um, on top of that, the artwork by Claire Goodchild is just totally my vibe. Like it's dark but beautiful. And I feel like those are two of the aesthetics I'm always drawn to. It's either really like feminine, beautiful flowers, but I also really love a darker aesthetic. I love skulls. I love the macabre. So this is like the perfect match of the two. So this is just a favorite. And then on top of that, like I was trying to think if I only could have 10 decks ever, I was also trying to think of versatility. And this is a deck that, you know, with the bright flowers I if I like to work with my deck seasonally so I feel like with the bright flowers it's something I could use in spring and summer but then because of the darkness of the skulls and the bones and the um like medical tools like from the Victorian era it's very appropriate for like October um the spooky months the darker months so I feel like with this deck, um, it's it's just a favorite, and it also has the versatility that I'd be looking for um, if I could only have 10 decks. So that is um, deck number two. So this is a huge favorite. I It's such a favorite of mine. I actually bought, so this is the indie version, but I actually bought the mass market, the one that comes with like the book and that's the one I use for client readings. I use for like in-person events. So this one is now just mine. So it just feels very sacred. You can see the box has had a lot of wear. I probably should get a bag for this, but yeah, love this deck. So this is deck number two. Okay, so deck number three is kind of like going along with that. And I have it in this cute skull pouch. And this is by the same creator. This is also by Claire Goodchild. And this is her Memento Mori Oracle and Lenormand. So this is a chunky deck because I did, um, this is the original Memento Mori and then I bought the general expansion pack. I think there's two expansion packs, but I only got the one and I combined them all. So again, very similar artwork to the um, antique anatomy. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if I can only have 10 decks, I want decks that can also pair well together. So I love that. Um, it's got a spookier vibe. It's also a great deck for shadow work because there are a lot of darker images in here. Like, let me see if I can find one. Like some of them aren't as dark, but then there's some like funeral sign, casket screw, amputation saw super dark but when that comes up in a reading which for some reason of course it comes up for me a lot it packs a punch um, casket so like this does not shy away this is not love and light this gets to the heart of the matter but again it's still so beautiful it's got all these flowers and botanicals and um yeah I love this I think with the color palette just being like black and white and green and then it's got the parchment paper. Like I think because I work with seasonal decks, this is a deck I can use all year round. I could pair this with Antique Anatomy, obviously. Um, Witch Bottle, Executioner, it's just cool. Which, um, so that's another reason I love it. And then on top of that too, it also doubles as a Lenormand deck. So like I'm not, I still haven't gotten super excited about learning Lenormand, 
but should I ever want to, you can separate the cards out and it can be a separate Oracle deck and a separate Lenormand deck. So from a versatility standpoint, um, that seemed like it made sense. So that is why this deck made the list because um, I included in this, this challenge um, any Oracle decks I might want to use. So this is deck number three. I think in this whole pile of 10, I actually have three Oracle decks. So I think this is a pretty nice distilled collection. Okay, so that was deck number three. So deck number four, um, while we're going on the theme of darker decks, this is an Oracle deck. This is my Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle. This is the indie version. It's not the popular mass market, even though I do own the mass market deck. The reason I would choose this deck over the mass market is there are extra cards in here that are not included in the mass market, which I think is really a shame because this deck, I feel like the artwork is super haunting and Halloween and Samhain is my favorite time of year. So that's why I love this deck so much. Um, the artwork is just beautiful. I love the watercolors. This is a card actually that is not in the, um, the uh, mass market edition, which I think is a shame. There's a lot of really great cards that they didn't include. Um, yeah, it's just great for shadow work. The, um, the guidebook is really great. I feel like it, it's a deck I like to journal with. It's a deck that, in regards to Oracle, in my opinion, it can serve as a standalone. Like I can shuffle this, pull one card in the morning and journal about it um, and leave it out and kind of work with it. Or this deck also, in my opinion, works really well um, in a tarot reading and a tarot spread. It can be like a clarifying card. It can be like a final energy or last message you need. Like this is another um, card that wasn't included in the mass market death. I think that's really beautiful. Centaur, that wasn't included. Um, yeah, I just, I love this deck so much. I think it's so deep. I think it's dark. I think it's evocative. Um, beautiful for shadow work. It really makes me feel very connected to... Um, Samhain and that time of year. So this to me would have to be included if I could only um, keep a collection of 10 decks. So that is deck number four. Okay, so deck number five I have in this pretty little pouch. Um, so I wanted to include one Rider Waite Smith deck and this deck, um, oh, I love it so much. For those of you who aren't familiar with the backs, this is the Hoi Polloi Tarot. Um, this is the original from 1972 for the extra cards. So I was able, this is like a very hard to find deck. It's obviously not in print anymore. Um, I was actually able to find this on Poshmark for like $50, which is insane because I've seen these decks on um, eBay going for like hundreds, like $600, which is crazy. Um, but the, the, the thing I love about this is it's got this like 70s vibe and aesthetic and it's just weird. It's like that super saturated colors. It's got this weird like, um, like medieval font, like it's just, it's quirky. Like, look at this. It's so 70s and retro and amazing. I'm really sensitive to color and these colors just make me super happy. Um, this deck was also such a joy to find too. Like I couldn't believe that I was able to find it at such a great price. So um, it didn't come with a box or anything. So like, it just feels very special that I was able to obtain this in my collection. So if I had to only keep 10 decks, this one would just, I mean, look at this beautiful Queen of Cups, the, these beautiful colors. I would have to keep this deck. It's just so cool. And I thought about including the, the Moon Baby, which is that um, that new deck that is like, a modern reproduction of this but I'm like well I have to keep the original that it's vintage look at these hot pinks and this hermit it's just vintage it's cool um, 
there's something about vintage de vintage decks like clearly this was created and, and printed in 1972 so like who knows how many people have used this deck or um, how many hands it's been in obviously I cleansed it when I got it but like I just love the shared tradition of tarot as well like this deck has been through some shit I'm sure this deck has helped people maybe figure out some really difficult things and maybe this deck has um shared a lot of really wise information I, I think that's what it is I think this deck feels wise because it's old so I love having this it's my favorite Rider Waite Smith cl um, clone and if I had to you know only have 10 decks this would be one of them I was really debating between this and the Golden Rider which is another um, Rider Waite Smith that I love 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 like so much but I think this one is just quirkier so like it, it has to be it has to be in there so that is deck number one two three four five okay that's five so going with the retro theme is my next deck and this is the aquarian tarot this is by david paladini and this is the um tit travel in a tin i also have this in the regular size version and I just love this deck. I think because it's in a tin, it's literally traveled with me a lot of places. Um, the artwork is, again, it's 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 so recognizable. Like you see these images and you're like, oh, the Aquarian Tarot. Um, again, it's got that like retro 70s vibe. So clearly I have an aesthetic that I like. Um, I like the color palette. I like how it also feels art deco it feels medieval and I also really love that when I bring this deck to reading so if I'm reading for other people or if I'm reading at live events or even if I'm reading online um, people who are older or maybe who have experienced and used tarot in in the 70s because I believe this was printed 1970 like this also has a shared history so it's cool when I read for clients who are maybe uh, older than me, because I was born in the 80s. So if you were someone who used tarot in the 70s, um, it brings up a lot of really nice emotions for people. And I think that's really cool that we can kind of share like in this collective experience. So I, I just love that. And then this is going to sound weird, but I also believe in past lives. So I feel like if I lived in the 70s, like I can see myself using this deck, like listening to the Beatles, like smoking weed, like hanging out with friends, like this would have been my deck for sure. So like the second I picked it up in my hands, like in this lifetime, I just was like, yeah, this deck is really familiar. I mean, look at this moon card. It's just... It's so gorgeous. So yeah, and because it's a travel deck for me, it's it's been around. Like it's been on airplanes, it's been in other countries with me. I also have a lot of these, I use a lot of these cards um, in the larger like regular tarot size um, on my altar, like this sun card. Like the moon and the sun really are my favorites. So this would have to be in my top 10. So that is the Aquarian Tarot. And again, I have this in the tin, as you can see, and then I also have it in the regular standard tarot size. Okay, so next is an Oracle deck. So this is really um, probably not a surprise either. This is the Inquire Within Oracle deck um, by Worthwhile Paper. You can see that this has definitely some wear it's been through the ringer it's been through shit um but this deck is amazing and um a lot of the reason why i like it is the versatility like because it's black and white and the messages are just simple and concise and to the point it honestly works with any tarot deck in my opinion i think that they pair well i think it worked because it's simple. It really works with tarot as like a clarifier or, you know, a message to close out a reading. But also if you wanted to pull a one card a day pull 
and then journal. I think there's enough with each of these, like even though the message is so simple, like love your dark side too, I feel like should you choose, you could go really deep into that. Like you could, I mean, I know I could write full journal pages like just on that message alone, like maybe meditating. Um, so yeah, I think the versatility of this deck is amazing. And there's nothing I haven't really been able to use with this deck. Like this deck just, it plays very well with others. So um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It would have to be in the top 10 for sure. Like all the decks that I listed so far, um, I think I paired with this deck. So again, versatility standpoint alone, this deck um, got a lot of bang for its buck. And this deck has definitely seen better days. The box definitely has. It's probably time I get like a backup copy or something. But it's so special. And um, yeah, if I lost this, I would definitely have to repurchase it. So this is my Worthwhile, um, no, I'm sorry, Inquire Within by Worthwhile Paper. So that is number seven, I believe, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Okay. So number eight, again, probably not a huge surprise to a lot of people. This is my Moon Void Tarot. This is the first edition. This is by Stephanie Capone. I love this deck for a lot of reasons. So um, I love the black and white color palette. I think it's a nice palette cleanser. Like because it's black and white, again, this pairs um, really well with most decks. And I really like to mix decks together. I think it's a nice way to get different energies into a reading. Um, so that's one reason I love it. Another reason I love it is when I got this deck, um, it definitely spoke to where I was on my tarot journey. And I really felt connected to this main character, which I believe is Stephanie Capone herself, which is the artist, but I really saw myself in this character. So it just felt very personal to me. And I, you know, I really used to call, call this deck like my soul deck because at the time when I got this, um, we just really connected on a very soul level. It just met me where I was at. Um, I love how it's modern and it just takes the Rider Waite Smith interpretations and just makes it feel like it takes place in today, right? Like she's sitting in an apartment. Um, I love this Ten of Cups. It's so cute. Um, there's some other modern cards. Oh, I love that moon card. Let's see, the Hermit card is really beautiful. I really like this Wheel of Fortune card with like this cup of coffee or cup of tea. It's just a great deck. Like the Two of Cups is like two coffee cups with a French press. Like that looks like my, you know, Sunday morning to me. I love that. And then the Empress, I love this card. I actually got um, commissioned art done by Stephanie to make me look like the Empress, which is um, my life purpose card I think I've mentioned before. So she made it look like me. I had my dog next to me. I really should reshare that image um, because I love it so, so much. So, and this lover's card, oh my gosh, like just, this is how love feels to me. It's like when you find this person, you're just like firing on all cylinders. You, like every chakra is aligned and that's how I think love for me should feel and has felt before. So like, I love this interpretation, the world, oh my goodness, like being in bed with like your, your fuzzy furry friend. So this deck is just everything. This death card is beautiful. So I do have her third edition as well, which is the, um, the black, white and pink one. And I equally as love that, but I think with this one, um, we've, we've been through a lot together, so um, this is why I would have to include this in my top 10. So that is the Moon Void Tarot. All right, so we're down to the last two, and the last two actually really surprised me. I, I didn't think I'd be picking these, but they just kind of like flowed out of my, my, my mind when I was creating this list. So number nine is the Lonely Dreamer Tarot, and I did not think this was going to be there, but it is. So the Lonely Dreamer, let's get myself organized here. First of all, I love this box. I love any magnetic box. I feel like all tarot decks should come in boxes like this. But um, anyway, so when I got this deck, um, this was actually sent to me by the creator, Melissa Watherspoon. 
Um, it's got that beautiful linen cardstock that shuffles like a dream. I love these backs. So when this was sent to me, and I believe this is probably, no, that's not in order anymore. When this was sent to me, I wasn't familiar with the artwork of Odilon Radon, but upon opening it, I was just wowed. Like I had never heard of him, but his artwork really speaks to my soul. It's vibrant yet dark and it holds a lot of emotion and it makes me feel a lot of things so I I just I don't know I this deck really took me by surprise and I remember filming like my unboxing video and I was just blown away um the emotions it was able to stir up in me and so basically this artwork is taking Odilon Radon's original artwork and then the um the creator Melissa Watherspoon kind of took the took the um pre-existing artwork and tried to fit it into the meanings but also you can see here like she um for the nine of swords so like this original image was Ray Dawn's and then she put in the nine swords and it's done in a way that's very subtle so it doesn't feel like it's taking away from the artwork but yeah, this deck, it just makes me feel all the feelings. Um, as does the Tarot Chimera, which is the black and white um, tarot deck based on Odalon Radon, which I'm using um, this month in December for my tarot edit. And I love that one as well. Um, I think because I got this one first, I really bonded with it. And I do like how the vibrant colors. It just, it makes me feel like he was such a deep and dark individual and it's something that like his energy really, just really resonates with me. And I think um, from a versatility standpoint, this is a deck that can be used all year in my opinion. Like the colors, I feel like they're, they're vibrant, so it could be spring and summer, but they're also dark, so it could be used in fall and winter. Um, it could be used for just like regular tower readings, but I think it has that level of darkness that could help you with shadow work as well. So look how pretty these vibrant purples are in the Ten of Cups. So yeah, I think, look at that double card. I think the versatility, the beauty of this, the emotions it's able to evoke in me, um, makes this a must have in my collection to only have 10. And again, that super surprised me. I didn't think this was going to be one, but when I thought about it, I was like, yep, that, that has to stay. All right. So my last deck also surprised me, but then it didn't. So this is a deck that I feel like I definitely need to use more. Um, this is the She Wolf Tarot. This is by, um, Devaney Wolf. So this was, I think, the third tarot deck I ever owned, and it was way, it was way advanced for me when I got it, but the artwork spoke to me, so I just knew, like, you know what? I'm just going to get this. Oh, this is still in order. I was filming something with this. So the artwork just spoke to me, and that's why I got it. It is largely Thoth-based, um, so when I bought it, I actually just let it sit on my shelf for a while. I knew it was going to be significant for me in my tarot practice, but I just wasn't ready for it, if that makes sense. And I don't know if you all do the same thing, but I just knew like, this is going to be significant for me. I'm just not there yet. So once I was more proficient in my reading and I revisited this deck, it was magic. And the, the vibe with this deck is very feminine, but very powerful. Like I think a lot of people maybe think feminine is weakness. And this is, this deck to me is feminine power. Um, I love the color palette. I love the pinks. Again, it has this like retro futuristic vibe. It's got a 70s vibe. So clearly I have a aesthetic that I enjoy. It also has that otherworldly vibe, which I also enjoy. Um, yeah, it's just, it's feminine power. It's feminine essence. It makes me want to step into that and explore that more. I think this also, it would be great for shadow work, but you don't necessarily need to use it for shadow work. Um, it feels 
fiery. It feels vibrant to me. It feels raw and it feels evocative and beautiful. So this is just, yeah, this is a favorite. I definitely need to use this more. I don't know why I don't, probably because I have too many decks at this point. And like I've been saying before, I, I think it's time for me to do like a huge um, deck decluttering and that's probably going to happen. I'm filming this right now in December of 2021 and I'm thinking by probably January of 2022, um, I'm going to be ready to uh, really take a look at my needs because clearly I was able to distill my collection down to 10 decks and if I were only able to have these 10 decks I think I would be very happy with my collection so it's it's showing me I don't need I don't need all of this um it's fun to have it all it's fun to have like a large collection for sure but the one thing with having a large collection is like not being able to connect with decks that you really want to connect with. So I think, and I'm not saying 2022 is going to be like a depth year for me. I know people use that term a lot, but I think I just want to like maybe get a little bit more back to basics. Um, so yeah, this is my top 10 decks, only 10 decks. So I probably can't fit these all into the shot, but um, this was such a fun, 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 fun um, VR and like challenge. So thank you to Katie Flowers who um, created this tag and put it together. And um, you know, if you all liked this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel because I am still really new. Um, on YouTube and in the tarot tube community so, and like definitely leave a comment like if what you think of my top 10 if you followed me for a while do, would you think these were my top 10 did they surprise you I'd love to hear what's in your top 10 um, this was really fun for me and I just kind of went off of gut instinct and I feel really good about it like if God forbid, like I had to like leave my house or like there was a fire and I had to grab 10 if I had a bag with these 10 I would feel really good about that. So yeah, this was my challenge, my, own, my only 10 decks by Katie Flowers. Let me know what you think in the comments below and um, I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone, bye.